Hello, I'm Justin Katz. It's Friday, September 18th, and this is Last Impressions number 50. Uh, again, as usual, please take a moment to connect with us wherever you're watching or listening to this. Uh, like and follow the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity on Facebook, also the OceanStateCurrent.com on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to the Center's YouTube channel, or you can find audio of Last Impressions on iTunes. Uh, you can join our email lists, real fun email lists. Everybody loves them. Um, and if you're watching us on Facebook Live, well, then you can go ahead and start a watch party. I don't even, I'm not sure how that works, but you can do it um, and do it right now. So I'll, after this is all set and done, I'll put all the relevant links from my commentary into the comments section of this post. So to start with something new, <laughs> not real news. Uh, Sometimes things are so crazy that you just have to make them up to make them seem a little bit more real. So, you may have heard that Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza, and you may have heard that they have a mayor. Sometimes it doesn't seem quite so clear. But the Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza has announced that the city would soon start to guarantee income for residents. Uh, he... he just, they're going to do it somehow. Uh, he was asked how the city could make that promise when it can't even guarantee that it will pay its existing bills. And the mayor said, quote, The state has been pretending it could pay employees pensions for decades. The federal government has been pretending it could cover Social Security payments after the baby boomers retire. Why can't Providence pretend we can hand out cash to people right now? End quote. Uh, the mayor then rode off on a colorful float while tossing the crowd gift certificates to restaurants uh, that are apparently closed permanently uh, because of a shutdown, but he was giving them out. Uh, witnesses report hearing him say, money, money, money. And where is the Batman? Uh, a little bit of a boomer uh, Gen X reference there. So meanwhile, after doing almost nothing in 2019, the leadership of the Rhode Island General Assembly, that's House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello and Senate President Dominic Ruggiero, announced their decision to hold off legislating a controversial budget until after the election. According to a spokesman, quote, everybody knows the election isn't going to change anything and that the legislature isn't going to make any difficult decisions. So why make voters uncomfortable uh, when they don't have to be by saying the truth out loud? In related news, uh, Secretary of State Nellie Gorbia uh, has sent out applications for mail ballots to all Rhode Islanders, whether you want them or not. Uh, I got mine the other day. You People are still getting them today. Um, while retrieving her own, uh, her own application from the mailbox, reportedly uh, Nellie Gorbia tripped on a neighbor's skateboard and hit her head. Uh, upon release from the hospital, she put out this statement, quote, Unexpected head trauma has brought me to my senses. Instead of pushing Rhode Islanders to vote early, I will extend the deadline for voting so voters can send their ballots after they've seen what the people who were elected last time actually do. Uh, the Rhode Island ACLU and Common Cause Rhode Island have already filed a lawsuit against the, the Secretary of State saying, quote, It is an assault on our democracy to disenfranchise people who voted based on what politicians might do by counting votes of people who have the advantage of knowing what those politicians actually did. Close quote. Now, obviously, this is not real news. Uh, next up is the conservative binder. Some things that actually happened in Rhode Island and maybe didn't get enough play. One of those things was a Trump flotilla. Now, this is video from John DePietro, this side, uh, from John DePietro, who has been going out and doing live coverage of these sorts of events. Um, as you can see, lots of fun, uh, people excited, patriotic, uh, quite a contrast to riots and burning cities and looting. Um, this is what uh, politics once looked like, uh, political events, uh, people excited for their candidates. We don't get that much, much anymore. Also, a, the gaspyproject.com, you can go and check out. They've got a taxpayer protection pledge. As we come up to the election, you go here and anybody in green, you'll see has pledged not to raise your taxes. That's very important. I took a separate uh, pledge from the Gaspy Business Group say, that says it, if it's an election, uh, a taxpayer pledge saying you will not vote for and people who don't 
pledge to vote, uh, not to do taxes, and you will vote for those people in green here. That's very important to do. Uh, and lastly, um, on, a, on a stranger note, uh, related, I guess, um, the House Minority Caucus, that's Republicans, if you <laughs> had forgotten who's in the minority in Rhode Island, uh, they came out with a program for uh, emergency education savings accounts to help kids through this difficult time uh, with COVID-19 and all that. Um, what I bring this up for, though, is what's very strange is if you watch this video, uh, courtesy of Roland Lavalli, who's been covering a lot of Republican stuff on, on with video, YouTube and Facebook for, for us all. Um, he if you watch this, Minority Leader Blake Filippi here said, quote, Republicans sat down and we tried to come up with a plan, which which might strike you as odd because. The plan they released was by and large proposed by the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity. And I bring this up in my conservative binder here because, you know, you never see this on the left. If there's a project, if there's a policy that a, a, conser a progressive or left wing group has put forward and the Democrats or uh, the Green Party or some other party or even, I guess, some Republicans, uh, what you'll, if they put it forward, they'll have those people there. They'll make it an event. They'll present it. They'll get a bigger audience. Here, for some reason, the policy group was not invited, and it's not clear why. Now on to my weekly essay. Uh, you might have heard that Providence College has sent out a message to all students that they have, they have to be on lockdown for two weeks. Apparently, 80 students have tested positive. Now, for some context... There are currently just under 5,000 students at Providence College. Uh, the website says 4,834. That's about that, that sliver of tested positive for COVID-19, um, which is why they're locking down those, those 80 kids. That is like one and a half percent. Let me see if I can do this. I'm not a good weatherman. It's like one and a half percent of the total population there, of the of st total student body. Um, and a large number of those apparently are living off campus. Uh, meanwhile, there's no word at all uh, that there's any actual illnesses on the campus, just positive tests. So students on campus are locked in their dorms, uh, except for uh, specific circumstances. If they go to dining halls, they have to be escorted. Uh, they're allowed to go out for brief periods to get some fresh air, I guess. Um, and at first, uh, when the announcement was first made, there was some doubt about whether they could even decide just to go home for the duration. Apparently they can now if they want to, if they'd rather be home than locked in their dorms, but they didn't even have that option at first. Uh, that kind of raises the question of uh, where is this coming from? What does it mean for the university to say you cannot go home? Uh, the email, to, an email to students and parents uh, this morning uh, said, quote, and this is a real quote, by the way, uh, last night's announcement was the result of a long, detailed discussion with state officials who have the authority to shut down the college for the remainder of the semester. End quote. Really? Uh, I have to ask, when did state officials get the power to shut down a private university based on less than 2% positive test rate for a virus that harms almost nobody of college age and, frankly, harms very few people generally uh, as a proportion of the population, especially at that younger end? Uh, where, where did the governor get this power? I mean, we talked about last episode, the General Assembly just giving up and not, not coming into uh, into have any oversight or say over the, the dictator governor. Uh, but where, where does this power come from? Now, a lockdown at Providence College may or may not be a reasonable response. And then if it is or isn't, individual students may or may not decide that it's worth following the instructions of the college if it means that they might have to part ways and go somewhere else uh, if they've violated the rules that the college puts in place. But the question is, again, how did this become the decision of government? Um, it's, it's hard to understand that process. And it's happening right now, this, this PC thing, just as we're getting news that Rhode Island's unemployment rate went up while the United States unemployment rate went down. So this is Rhode Island, July and August. 
and you can see it went up while the United States went down. Uh, this is a, a very ominous sign. Uh, I had a, a post on the OceanStateCurrent.com talking about how a crisis can be an opportunity to make changes in policy in our lives and society. Uh, what these numbers start to make you worry about is that people from Rhode Island are starting to take the opportunity to get out of here. Uh, the to stop looking for work and just say this this doesn't work for me anymore. Uh, the the idea that we're just shutting things down, there's no end, and there are better places to be if you're in that situation. I mean, we hear that the governor's office has released very, very little of the money uh, that they've gotten from the federal government to kind of alleviate the problem. Uh, some people suggest that it's really a, a ploy to, to end up getting that money into the state coffers to fill a giant budget gap, which could be, who knows, a billion dollars or more. Um, but it's important to understand the state did this. The country is doing this, getting better, which you expect after you've opened up, after people can do things, after things start to fade and people get more comfortable and they adjust to their new lives. This is Rhode Island. This is what we've done. And it needs to be fixed. Um, it's got, got to, got to change. Um, and it starts, frankly, with us remembering that we're adults, we're capable of making our own decisions, and we ought to start pushing ourselves and our, our institutions to remember that fact. Uh, so again, I'm Justin Katz, this is Last Impressions 50, and like on Facebook, retweet on Twitter, join on YouTube, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you again next week.